I think this is definitely the way so we can make it so things can go back to normal, you know? I feel that getting vaccinated is something that's necessary for us to go back to normal like how things were before and mm -hmm. I'm excited to be a, like one of the first people to get a new vaccine. I'm a little nervous, but kind of excited at the same time. I'm going to stick my COVID-19 vaccines. How do you feel about that? I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. Because I don't like infection. I don't want to get COVID, so I'm really happy to take the vaccine. And I want everybody else to take the vaccine because it's very important. Get vaccinated! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us for this COVID 19 update. We want to welcome all the listeners and viewers. We also want to welcome the National Epidemiologist, Dr. Shalonin Ahmed, as well as the National Coordinator of the COVID-19 Vaccination Unit, Dr. Kivian Burnett. Let's welcome Dr. Ahmed to provide us with our statistics first off this evening. Good evening, everyone. Let me recognize the presence of Dr. Kivian Burnett, our vaccine management team coordinator. Ms. Harris, media um, listeners, comment abroad. Good evening to all. <coughs> COVID-19 status update as at February 3rd, 2022. Total number of new cases, 101. Total active cases, 1,005. Total recovered cases, 8,666. Total COVID associated deaths, 51. Vaccine coverage, 54.8% of the eligible population are now fully vaccinated. And additional 5% are partially. COVID-19 case trend, daily confirmed cases, and seven-day moving average of cases. This graph represents from the time of August 1st to February 4th. As you can see, <coughs> the number of cases have increased since the end of December uh, drastically. On average, we are seeing now 96 cases per day, that's. <laughs> the highest number of cases we have seen on January 31st, 200 cases were, were reported. Let's hope that is our peak. Okay. In terms of COVID-19 cases by age group, so the proportion of cases, um, Previous. As you can see, number of cases, the most of the cases are coming from the age group of 18 to 39 years age group. Uh, they represent uh, most of the cases. And this is all through since, uh, since August to February. Uh, and they are consistent uh, all through the period. <clears throat> and. Um, pretty much all age groups uh, representation all through the time is uh, almost the uh, proportion remain the same. Uh, however, the age group of 12 to 17 years age group, as you can see, after month of November, um, 
the proportion has decreased or shrink a, a bit. Um, um, that's the, you can see yellow, um, yellow graph. Um, and then it increased by January again, and it widened the, uh, the proportion for that age group. Um, nonetheless, uh, the representation of this um, total number of cases are coming from the age group of 18 to 39 years. Next. In terms of isolated uh, the, by age group, the number of people currently admitted to isolation facilities by the age group, um, again, again, the, the people who are mostly admitted were the age group of 18 to 59 years age group. And then we have um, 60 years and above and under 18 years old uh, age group as well. <clears throat> Proportion of patients in our COVID care complex by the severity based on currently admitted by the, by the complex. Um, as you can see, most of them are mild to moderate. Um, as it stands for, uh, as of yesterday, uh, about 70% represents the mild to moderate. And then we have um, severe cases and about 15% uh, and then 5% are uh, critical. In terms of COVID-19 death by age group, the confirmed deaths and case fatality rate, that is, uh, since uh, using the data from August 1st to 20, of 2021 to, uh, to uh, February 2022. Um, as you can see, most of these cases are coming from the age group of 70 and up, and the brown color in the graph represents uh, unvaccinated or not vaccinated then green represents vaccinated but partially, and then dark blue represents uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, so of this, uh, in the age group of 70 plus, as you can see, there are proportion uh, who were vaccinated, but most of them are unvaccinated. Um, in terms of the age group of 60 to 69, all of them were unvaccinated. In the age group of 50 to 59, there were proportion were vaccinated, but mostly unvaccinated again. And of course, 40 to 49 years, they all were unvaccinated. In terms of the fatality rate in, in by their age group, 40 to 49 years, anything um, below 40 years, the case fatality is 0%. However, 40 to 49 years represents about 0.18%. Uh, 50 to 59 years represents 0.61 percent, and 60 to 69 years, 0.85 percent. However, case fatality for 70 plus years is about 6.08 percent. Clinical presentation for this wave, meaning uh, the period of late December. Um, to present. Uh, most of these cases are presenting with mild symptoms in general. Most present with low-grade fever, generalized body pain and body and joint pain, nausea and vomiting also, some, some, may, uh, some, some presented with nausea and vomiting. Uh, it is more like gastritis without epigastric pain. Some had upper respiratory tract symptoms. However, this could be co-infection of other common colds, but we, I have not seen any case with no loss of taste or smell in this wave. In summary, on average, there is a 92% increase in daily number of confirmed cases when compared to the time period prior to December 26th, 2021. The circulating variant in Dominica is a different one than the Delta in terms of transmissibility and clinical presentations. It is highly transmissible, which has been made apparent by the current daily trend occurring even among the vaccinated group. However, its clinical presentation 
has remained very mild so far. Most of the deaths are unvaccinated, still on 95%. With this, I thank you. And our thanks to Dr. Shaladin Ahmed, who is our national epidemiologist. Just a recap of the numbers as of February 3rd, 2022. New cases, 101. Active cases in Dominica, 1,005. Fortunately, most people who've been infected have recovered successfully, 8,666. But of course, you'd notice that that brings us very close to 10,000 infected persons here in Dominica. Deaths in Dominica at 51, and of course, we continue to sympathize with those who have lost anyone due to this COVID-19 pandemic. Next up this evening, we welcome the National Coordinator of the COVID-19 Vaccination Unit, Dr. Kivian Burnett. Thank you very much, Ms. Harry. Pleasant good evening to you. I want to acknowledge my esteemed colleague, Dr. Shaludin Ahmed, the national epidemiologist, and the listening and viewing public, both here and abroad. A pleasant good evening to you. Um, we stand before you today to give you a vaccine uptake, tell you how much persons have been taking the vaccines from a period of August to December 2021. As you know, available in Dominica, we have three types of vaccines, that of the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Sinopharm vaccine, and the Pfizer vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine, as we know, is eligible for children 12 and up, and we begin inception or inoculation, sorry, of students in September 2021. If you notice, um, persons have been taking a lot of the AstraZeneca vaccine and Sinopharm vaccine in the period of August. The first dose um, in August 2021 of the AstraZeneca at 809, and second dose is at 145. Sinopharm 513, 512, sorry, and the second dose is 374. Um, that of the Sinopharm, um, excuse me, the Pfizer, was not present in August, so we had zero, and had a total of 1,940 vaccines in the period of August 2021. In September, we saw an increase in vaccination in the public, especially in that of the AstraZeneca and Sinopharm, and with the initiation of the Pfizer vaccine, if you notice, a lot of adults <laughs> leaned towards the Pfizer vaccine rather than the two that we had available prior to its arrival. And at the end of September, we had 4,271 persons who were vaccinated in that period. Now in October, we saw an increased uptake, especially among the students and adults in the favor of Pfizer vaccines, and not um, forgetting our two other vaccines that we had prior to the inception of the COVID-19 vaccines in Dominica, which was that of the AstraZeneca and the Sinopharm. But if you can see from the data before you, in October, we had children in the first dose at 795, as well as the second doses, because they already had the first dose running over to 1,349, and adults 1,691. And that in itself gave us a total at the end of October of 6,855, 6, sorry. So as you can see here, our most favorable month for vaccine uptake in 2021 was October. We continue to see the increase in vaccines for all the months, especially that of November and December. So a total of 19,170 vaccines were administered. 
Um, I must also say that we started the booster doses in that of December. We've noticed people are leaning towards AstraZeneca booster as well as that of the Pfizer booster. And some people tend to go with the Sinopharm. But the favorable ones are of that of the AstraZeneca and the Pfizer. So now, again, we continue to reiterate the amount of vaccines or the type of vaccines, sorry, COVID-19 vaccines that are approved for emergency use listing by the WHO, which are the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's two doses at eight weeks apart. Some people may do six weeks, some may go up to 12, but standard for us is eight weeks apart. Then we have the Sinopharm vaccine, which is two doses at three weeks apart, and that of the Pfizer vaccine, which is two doses at three weeks apart. Today, I am giving you some good news for persons who are interested in taking vaccines, but are saying that they are waiting for others or other types of vaccines to be available in Dominica. So we are expecting 30,240 doses of the Moderna vaccine, which is a mRNA vaccine similar to that of the Pfizer vaccine, which is at two doses at 28 days apart. So look out in coming news and announcements to hear when the Moderna vaccine will be available to you at all type three health centers within the seven health districts, as well as the Windsor Park, the Windsor Park Sports Stadium daily. Okay, so from what you've seen earlier in Dr. Ahmed's presentation is that there's a vast majority of common or current infections of COVID-19 cases and observed in a lot of unvaccinated people. However, we know that vaccinated people can get COVID and we call that breakthrough infections. But in such cases, the events are less severe than those that are unvaccinated. And as the results show and the data show that there is a limited amount of deaths among persons who are vaccinated compared to that of those who are unvaccinated. We must also say that it's noted too that persons who are vaccinated tend to recover quickly or much more rapidly than those who are unvaccinated. As we speak, there are persons who spend sometimes up to 30 days at the COVID care complex, and especially those who are unvaccinated on ventilators or when they are due discharge to and sent home, they are sent home on portable oxygen. So I encourage you guys to take the onus on you right now and get vaccinated as well as we speak. Okay, so this is now one of our new projects that we are going to be launching very soon. It's the new vaccination certificate. So it's going to be a pictorial ID card with a QR code. Now this card is specific to each individual who got vaccinated. So if you're not vaccinated, you would not get a card like this. And we are asking everybody to come get vaccinated, as well as the different districts to have a log sheet or even that of the proper records of everybody who got vaccinated within the district or any pop-up site so we can issue them a brand new COVID-19 vaccination certificate. So in front you would see a pictorial ID of a person, her name is Jane Doe. It has a given name, a surname, a date of birth, as well as a vaccination number. Now the vaccination number will be created from her demographics and her particulars, and that will be specific to her. You also see in here that we have a date of issue. Um, this card is actually not a real card, it's just a prototype, so don't think it's actually somebody that is there. <laughs> So uh, the date of issue, issue sorry, is April 30th, and if you notice, it is corresponding to her second dose that she received. Um, she received her first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine in March, the 5th of March. Um, below of the type of vaccine that she received, which is AstraZeneca, is a lot number. The lot number is specific that, to that of the vaccine, so we know the manufacturing type and the different labels and the different particulars of that given vaccine. has a shelf life and sometimes we put the expiry date just for 
our record. So don't think it's a vaccine that we're giving you expired or is expired within your system. Mm -hmm. And yes, it actually questions like that do pop up on a daily basis. So I'm just giving the clarification there. And on this card, you also see nationality. So right now, when we are registering people for the pre-registration forms, we tend to Sometimes people tend to leave behind their cards. Um, so let's give an example that you're traveling to Puerto Rico, but hence, or by mishaps that your card stays in Dominica. You can log into a digital platform with your So that would be added to the card, as well as the official signature of that of maybe the CMO or the Minister of Health himself. To be the first and second immunization, the first dose and second dose has begun to decrease over. Months after the second dose. Okay, so the booster helps people to maintain a strong protection against severe corona diseases. Sorry, so we know um, corona is just the... Booster dose is available. It has been said on numerous reports that persons have been assessing the health centers at the given later in the month, we are urging all patrons who vaccination mobile unit.
make sense out of it, but it's simple and to the point. If you look towards the left, you can see the dark areas there. The two dark areas indicate the lungs. Now, an uh, x-ray is taken when somebody's breathing in, so that shows exactly the, the amount of capacity or the capacity at which the lung can withstand with air, as you can see. This person does have COVID, they're COVID positive, but vaccinated. They have minor fibrosis of the lungs. If you look at the dark areas, you see white patches. It's minor fibrosis of the lungs, which can happen as a form of scarring. But towards the right, you can barely see any dark object, which would indicate that the lungs is filling up with air. So in essence, I leave you with this good message. The onus is on you to get vaccinated. Vaccines do not prevent you from getting COVID-19. We have reiterated that on many occasions, on briefings, as well as on radio shows, and within our pop-up sites in the different communities. But it prevents you from getting severely ill from COVID-19 and also deaths. With this, I bid you a pleasant good evening. Get vaccinated today. And our thanks to Dr. Kivian Burnett, who is the National Coordinator of the COVID-19 Vaccination Unit. We want to also thank all the medical professionals who have dedicated their time to this vaccination campaign. Again, we urge you to get vaccinated. It is free of charge here in Dominica. And I'm stressing it's available in all the main health centers within every district here in Dominica. You can also get vaccinated at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium Monday through Friday. Like Dr. Burnett said, the Moderna vaccine will soon be on island, so that gives you four options for vaccination. Do not let those opportunities go to waste, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we thank you for your time and your attention. We'd like to thank our media partners for their continued cooperation and we'd like to thank our presenters this evening for their dedicated work. We wish you a safe weekend. Good evening.